Hi all, welcome back to the next family of computer components which is going to be the input of the family. This is Sanisha from the global CSNB learning and development team and I'm here to present you this family right away. So let's get started. Uh, well, we have studied a bit about the input output family, but let's understand it a little more vividly. Now, uh, firstly, we have different kinds of peripherals, the input output peripherals like printers, monitor, keyboard, speakers, broadband, pen drives, webcams, mouse, loads of joysticks, etc. Loads of such peripherals. Where do these connect? Where do they get connected to? They get connected to ports. Exactly. The ports on the chassis. They get connected to these ports and these ports are again connected to the motherboard. But how are they connected to the motherboard? They could either be integrated or dedicated. Well, if you remember, in the first family, that is the processors, we studied about the motherboard, where we saw that there are a lot of chips which are integrated onto the motherboard, which give out, which give out these integrated ports, which are there by default on every Dell computer, while the dedicated ports come out from the expansion slots which are put in these slots the, the expansion cards which are put in these slots so this is the PCI Express Type 16 expa expansion slot which takes in only the graphic card PCI Express Type 1 sound cards, Wi-Fi cards and TV tuner cards only the latest ones all the legacy cards used to go into the PCI card slot look at this this is the PCI card slot so they give out dedicated ports which are uh, which are, uh, which come out only if the card has been inserted that is how we have integrated cards and dedicated cards integrated ports and dedicated ports which come out here now we also saw that if you have a, a dedicated video port obviously the integrated video port becomes a dummy it is disabled and the dedicated one is used and we also saw that dedicated cards uh, they obviously give out much much better performance when compared to integrated cards because integrated cards they do not have their own processor and the memory while dedicated cards because it's a full-fledged card sitting into the slot would give its own processor memory would give out better bandwidth and would give out the relevant port so we already saw that so what we need to understand now is the different kinds of ports we can have on a Dell computer, uh, the different kinds of ports which are by default on Dell computers and which can, which are optional, that is by insertion of dedicated cards, we can have it. And thirdly, we are going to learn about these integrated and dedicated cards a little more vividly. Okay, so let's get on to the first part. Let's try and identify the ports, the different kind of ports we have on a computer. Look at these ports. Simple perfect it is nothing but the USB port now most of the peripherals today be it a keyboard a mouse a webcam a printer any such device today goes into the USB port the normal version the current version of the USB is USB 2 but we have already come across uh, the USB 3 version it's already there in the market and a couple of our systems that we sell like the XPS 15 and XPS 17 system the notebooks they have USB 3 the advantage of having USB 3 over USB 2 is that it's much, much faster, much faster. You'd be able to copy no time. A movie which used to take two minutes may take around one minute here to be copied onto a pen drive. That's the advantage of having USB 3. All right. Let's go to the next one. Look at this port. Uh, okay. One more thing about USB ports, guys. Remember, this is a normal USB port. While this particular plugin goes into a mini USB port, we usually find them on uh, our cell phones, I, I guess mostly Samsung cell phones. So USB has normal USB ports as well as mini USB port and converters are readily available in the market. Look at this port. Anybody who can tell me this, anybody. Even here you have the mini and the normal version. Which is this port? Any idea? Uh, well, it is the Firewire port. IEEE 1394 codenamed Firewire port we find these ports usually on PDAs on smartphones etc on digital cameras as well uh, the old camcorders used to have this the advantage of this port is it is faster than USB version 2 but with the coming of USB version 3 this port may go end of life very soon okay uh, it's not used very often but still some of our notebooks have it by default in desktops you can insert Firewire cards into the into the expansion slot. Which slot? PCI expansion slot, obviously. In those slots and get a Firewire port. Look at these ports. 
common ports, you should be knowing them. This is called the RJ11 port, telephone port, exactly. And this is called RJ45 port, a little bigger in size, more width, it is for broadband connections. So RJ11, we don't use this very often enough. It, it is used for fax services on your desktops or laptops. Uh, today, dial-up service is hardly used. Nobody uses internet through dial-up. So you would not find, it's, it's a kind of legacy port. It's not used as much. On desktop computers, you can get this port by inserting a modem card into the PCI slot and this port would come out in the dedicated ports uh, section. The RJ45 port, very, very commonly used. It is the broadband port. It connects to broadband services. Apart from broadband services, it is also used for LAN connection. This port comes with every Dell computer by default because every Dell computer comes with an integrated network card, integrated NIC card, network interface card. We also call it as the 10 by 100 card or the 10 by 100 by 1000 card. 10 by 100 by 1000 is a gigabit network card which is faster than a normal network card. Today we even have 10 by 100 by 1000 by 10,000. Oh, that is like, uh, I'm not sure what comes after gigabit, but it's something really fast. So this is a port which is there by default on every Dell computer. Just not this port, even the USB ports are by default on every Dell computer, be it a notebook, be it a desktop. Wait, let's go to the next range of ports. Look at this entire range here. This entire range constitute the video ports of a system. This is the old age old port, S video port. We don't use it. I don't think we have it on any of our computers. Maybe with dedicated graphic cards on desktop computers, you might get this port, but it's hardly used. Yeah, this is a very common port. It's the analog video port, which we call it as the VGA port. It's also called the, uh, it's also called a 19 pin port, I guess. Okay, the VGA port is used for connecting monitors, but in the analog mode. Something better is the DVI port. This is called the digital video interface port, DVI port, which connects to a monitor, but gives you a digital display. Obviously better than the VGA. But something even better today, we have these two ports. They look somewhat alike, but they are different. Look at this. It is, it is a kind of trapezium. It is a kind of trapezium. This is the HDMI port, high definition, multimedia interface and this is a display port it's got a it's got a one curve here and here it is flat so it is in the shape of a d display port both these ports are capable of just not transferring video signals just not digital video signals but also digital audio signals so the advantage is for example if my computer my desktop or my laptop has any of these ports what I'm going to do ideally is, if I have an LCD TV with me, uh, I directly connect the HDMI or the display cable to the LCD TV's HDMI or display cable and it will transfer both audio as well as video. So I don't have to uh, insert a separate cable into one of these audio ports and connect it to my LCD TV. No, that's not needed. Uh, HDMI or display port would directly transfer both audio as well as video. Advantage. Now, if, uh, you would notice that this DVI port would go end of life very soon. It is getting replaced with the display port. Display port is more towards uh, monitors uh, and you know those kind of computer-based devices, while HDMI port is more towards uh, LCD TVs and plasmas. It's more towards the TV segment. Although you would find it on monitors as well. So, S video completely end of life. VGA, DVI, HDMI, and display port. Let's go to the next one. I'm sure this should be pretty easy. This is, these are the audio ports. So speaker gets connected to speaker, uh, both of them left and right speakers, line in, just in case you want to connect some external device directly here into the computer for recording purposes, mic, etc. So you could have all these audio ports there. This is a little different port. It is called the SPDIF port. Now you don't have this by default on the computers. Uh, maybe just one or two computers may have it by default. but. It is used for transferring raw digital audio from your computer to any other device. Now usually which device get connected? Amplification devices, the orchestra parties, they use this SPDIF port to amplify sound because when you have raw digital data coming out of it, it is only in zeros and ones, can be amplified to any extent and that's how they amplify it to those huge 10,000, 12,000 watts speakers etc and whatnot. 
it's called the SPDIF port. Look at this port. This is not as big as it looks. It's a pretty small port. It is called the eSATA port. As the name says, yes, it is to connect hard drives, SATA hard drives. Now, at times, customers have old computers. They would want to transfer all the data of their old computers from those hard drives into the, into the newer ones. How would they do it? They would connect the old computer's internal SATA hard drive to these new computers' external eSATA port and get the data transferred. So it is a very common port. It is getting more and more common. A lot of computers now have it by default. A lot of notebooks especially. Look at this port. This entire range of ports are called legacy ports because they're not used as of now. I mean, they're hardly used. You may find them in, uh, uh, in certain business systems which need to be compatible with the older peripherals and devices. You may find them in some uh, gaming systems which require those older joysticks to get connected. Because uh, gamers are used to their joysticks and they wouldn't want to shift from that. So this is the serial port. It's also called the 9-pin port, RS-232 port. It was, it was used to connect um, uh, keyboards and mouse and scanners as well, serial scanners. And this is the PS by 2 port which gets connected to joysticks. This was the parallel port which got connected to printers, the old printers. Today most of the new printers go to USB ports. So these are legacy ports. Once again, USB, Firewire, RJ11 dial-up or uh, fax modem port, RJ45 broadband port, S-Video no longer used, VGA, analog video port, DVI, digital video port, HDMI, uh, digital audio as well as video port, digital audio as well as video port, display port. Audio ports, SPDIF ports. eSATA port for connecting internal hard drives externally, SATA hard drives, serial, PS by 2 and parallel ports. These are the different ports which come into our computers. Obviously, they may not be by default. Some may come with the presence of a graphic card. Some may come with the presence of some kind of expansion card or whatsoever. Okay? But remember one thing. Every Dell computer comes by default with these USB ports, with this RJ45 port, with one of the video ports. Could be any one. Usually, it's the VGA or the DVI. But some notebooks even have HDMI by default and some notebooks even have display by default. So one of the video ports also comes by default due to the presence of due to the presence of integrated graphics in a system. And you even have these audio ports by default on Dell systems due to the presence of integrated sound card. But by having a dedicated sound card, you could have more ports, you could have uh, better performance as well. Coming back to the input and output family, we have not studied, we know the different peripherals which get connected to computers. We have not studied the different kinds of ports. And let's talk about what is integrated, what is dedicated. So obviously integrated is something which are like chips, right, soldered onto the motherboard. And dedicated are like these cards. Look at that. Can you, uh, can you actually see which is this, can you actually find out which is this card? Look at the kind of ports it has. It has got a DVI port, a VGA port, and an S-Video port. And look at this connector. This connector would go into its slot. If you remember, it's the PCI Express Type 16 slot, because graphic cards in Dell go only on that slot. And this is a full-fledged graphic card having its own processor, having its own memory, etc. And the best part is it gives out its own ports. So the uh, integrated graphic cards ports in on the system stand dummy and then the fresh monitor can be connected to any of these ports you can even have multiple monitor connectivity because there's more than one port coming out so you can connect one to the VGA one to the DVI and you can have two displays one uh, you're watching a movie on one of the displays and, and the other monitor which is connected to DVI you may be surfing the web you can have two displays. You can even have clone. You can even have an extended desktop. Clone means the same display, extended desktop, having two separate displays. Can you tell me which is this dedicated card? Look at these ports. Which are these ports? These are the sound card ports, audio ports. This is called a MIDI port. Uh, it's, it comes with a sound card. And this goes into, look at that. This is a big slot. It may not go into the PCI Express Type 1. It would go into the PCI slot because it's, it's, it looks pretty big. So this is a dedicated sound card, this is a dedicated graphic card. And all these dedicated sound cards and graphic cards, they go into the PCI 
Express Type 16 and PCI slot respectively giving out their own ports so that is how integrated stuff and dedicated stuff works and obviously dedicated stuff as we have seen before they tend to perform much much better because they have their own processor and own memory well that is all to do with uh, with the input output family let me just check if we have missed out on something well if you can open your reference books you would see the input output components on page number 15 the different ports are also given there and it also gives a graphic representation and pictures of all the ports guys uh, understand these ports well because it makes a lot of lot of sense it also gives you how are integrated chips how do they look like and how are dedicated or discrete expansion cards on the motherboard it gives you the different slots and their speeds and that is all to do with the input output family so we end this family here uh, we would in the next video we would look at the chassis family till then goodbye